Here we go. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this portion of your FET training. This webinar is a continuation to the brief nine-slide online introduction to evaluation that you completed prior to the webinar today. Today, we're going to work with and discuss the specific levels of evaluation. As we proceed, please remember to mute your speakers unless you wish to make a comment, most especially if you are dealing with background noise. Reducing that background noise helps both in the fact that we are recording this webinar so it will be easier to hear for others and for the ease of hearing each other on this call. If it is very quiet where you are, you are probably okay without putting the mute on. Today you're going to have an opportunity to learn about and practice classifying evaluation inquiries into the four levels of evaluation. Please also feel free to access the identified pages in your FET handout. Our roadmap for today's webinar is really straightforward and to the point. We are going to define, describe, and work with the four levels of evaluation. <clears throat> Prior to logging on to this webinar in the online introduction to evaluation, you were introduced to the following things. The purpose of evaluation. You also reviewed some pros and cons of conducting evaluation. And you also posted three to four ways to collect evaluation data that either you have used in a recent training session or that you yourself have experienced as being a participant in a workshop that you've attended. Also, if you reflect back on our face-to-face -face training, you discussed the many pros and cons around evaluation when you participated in the great debate activity. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. Does that ring a bell, the debate that we had? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Let's hear a few more yeses. Yes. 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 Okay, I just want to make sure, because that's kind of what we're talking about here is evaluation. And from that debate, of course we summarize that evaluation really is critical. Um, even though there can be some ne negative things that come out of it, this webinar should dispel some of that so that you can really have a better understanding of the value of doing evaluation, well thought out evaluation. All of these activities that you've done so far sets the groundwork for our webinar today as we learn about and work with the four levels of evaluation. What questions or comments do you have regarding anything that we've talked about so far? Anybody? No. All right. So let's move on then. Sorry about that. So here's what we're doing today. All right. The four levels of evaluation are randomly listed on the screen. In reality, there is a specific order for them that goes from level one to level four. Looking at them up on the screen, which one of these do you think is evaluation level one? Anybody? Which one of those four, they're not in order, do you think is evaluation at level one? Participant reaction. Participant reaction? You are right. Wait. What? Why do you think this is considered level one? Like the basic level of evaluation. I'm getting a lot of background noise. Somebody needs to mute their phone so the rest of us can hear. Thank you. Why do you think that participant reaction is considered the, the first level, the lowest level, the simplest level of evaluation? Anybody? Patty, 
I'm not hearing anybody's response. You can write a response if you're not on the phone and you're just looking at your screen. I'm sorry to interrupt, but is anybody having trouble with the screen? Yes, I can't get it up. I can't get it up either. I can't either. I can't. Okay, for those of you that can't get a screen, I will try to make sure that I say what's on the screen. So listen carefully. There are four levels of evaluation. They're randomly listed on the screen as behavior change, participant reaction, results in impact, and participant learning. And I'm asking which do you think is the lowest level, the easiest level, level one level of evaluation? Participant people reaction. said they thought it was participant reaction, which is correct. But why? Why is that level one? Because everything else is a reflection of how the teacher reacted to the training. That's My partly difference. true. That's partly true. But we are looking at participant reaction. That's the first level. It is the easiest to obtain because all you're doing is asking them for a reaction. They do not have to think about content at all. They're just reacting to how they feel about something. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, yes. which one do you think is evaluation level two? Behavior change, results in impact, or participant learning? Participant learning. Participant learning. All right, and that is correct. So I ask the same question. What makes that a little bit higher than level one? Why is that level two? Because if you hear their feedback from what you're teaching them, then you're able to know that they're, they are learning the material. Well, we don't know that they're learning it. We do know that they're learning about it, remember? I mean, because this is, this is very early on, right at the end of training. But what are they forced to have to think about? If we're looking at participant learning, what are they forced they to learn. think about in this one? Specifically what they learn? Yeah, the content, the actual content that was covered. You are right. Okay? They have to reflect back. They have to make a connection to the content. And then they have to articulate what it is they learned about that day. Okay? So that does require a little bit more than just reacting to something, correct? Yes. All right. So which one do you think is evaluation level three? Behavior change or results and impact? Results and impact. Behavior change. Okay, I have got two different answers. Let's get somebody else out there and tell us why you think it is level three, one or the other. Behavior change or results and impact? I think it's behavior change too. Why? Why do you think that's before results and impact? Will it help if I say you're correct? <laughs> well, yes. Okay. <laughs> but I, would, I would think the results would show when you're actually in the your new environment or the, the environment that you've learned the material about. That is true. What about behavior change? When does that happen? Right then, right when you're in the training. No, 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 no. Think about that. If you learn about five new adult child interaction strategies, are you making that behavior change right then and there? No. No, you're not. Taha, that's an aha moment for people. Right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. But still, I said the behavior change came first, so that is level three. Now, somebody out there, why is behavior change level three and results in impact level four? Because you have to apply the content that you've learned, and then you can evaluate the results of that later. Say that again. Say it again. Because you have to apply the content that you learn, and then you can evaluate the results from that later. That is exactly correct. You must take what you learned about, right? You take it back home. You just learned about it, right? You, you haven't even really internalized it. Would you agree with that? Yes. You haven't really internalized it. So you have to take what you learned about, take it home, and you have to work with it. You have to practice it. You have to implement it. And all that moves you in 
to starting to make some changes in your behavior. Everybody get that? Yes. Yes. And isn't that what you want people to do? You want them to implement, and if they start to implement and practice, then they are starting to change their behavior. Correct? Correct. Everybody's got that now. No questions? No. no. All right. So I've already put up there what level four is because it's the only one left. I'm going to put up the proper order now, okay? So results and impact, what does that mean to you in terms of evaluation? If the behavior changed, uh, got improved results and impact with the students. Okay. And that's very simply put and that's very simply correct. If you go back, you take what you learned about, and you go back and you start to practice what you learned about, that behavior change should, over time, have some impact on the children, the program, or the family. So ultimately, that will mean improved quality of services, which is our definition of Training. So when teachers change their behavior in positive ways, this has a direct impact on children and the quality of services that the teacher is providing. What comments or questions do you have on these four levels right now as they stand? Do they make sense to you? Can you internalize what each one of those actually gets from the participant? Questions or comments? Just about the, the leveling. Anybody? All right. I'm going to move on and we're going to kind of look at each one of these one at a time. Level one evaluation is participant reaction. At this level, the trainer is seeking feedback on the training session itself, and this takes place right at the end of the workshop session. For example, the teacher might ask, I mean the trainer, I'm sorry, the trainer might ask the participants, what did you enjoy about this training session? The word enjoy right there tells you this is just a reaction, just an opinion, right? Right? Yes. 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 Okay. Another question might be, are you satisfied with the support materials you received? Again, it's totally subjective whether they're satisfied or not. Did they like what they got in terms of the material? And then finally, another example, how effective was your trainer? You're asking how they liked the trainer, their reaction to the trainer. And that's all that is. It's an opinion. It's subjective. And it's just their reaction. But some of that imp information is important, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. just that your whole evaluation should not be after participant reaction. A couple of key questions is all you need in terms of participant reaction. Now, method so this, to this level, was there a question? No. Okay. No. Methods for this level could be uh, rating or ranking scales on things like from one to five, please rank you know, the effectiveness of the trainer. Uh, yes, no questions. Were you satisfied? Yes, no. And open-ended questions like, what did you or what did you not, you know, and ask them to just expound a little bit. You always get more usable information when you ask simple open-ended questions rather than yes, no, or um, closed-ended. But here are a couple examples. You can say, are you satisfied with the support materials? That would be a yes, no. But if you said, what did you like about the support materials? You're going to get better information. Another example, did you enjoy this training? Yes, no. But if you ask, what did you enjoy about this training? You are going to get better information, more detailed information. Finally, a last example. How effective was your trainer? If you just say, was your effect, trainer effective, that's a yes, no. But if you say, in what ways was your trainer effective, you are going to get much better information for yourself in terms of evaluation. Does that make sense to you, the difference between a yes, no question about reactions versus an open-ended question? 
That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Level two. Level two evaluation is participant learning. At this level, you're asking the participants to recall what they learned about. And again, this is right at the end of the training session. You remember what I said to you in our face-to-face -face training about learning in a training situation? I said it here already today on this call, on this webinar. Let me just give you sort of a hint. Do they really learn it at the training, or do they learn about it? Learn about it. Learn about it. Yeah, it's really important as trainers that you kind of get that tucked into your craw, because in a you know, two- or three-hour training, they are learning about a lot of things, but it is not internalized yet. So just keep that in mind, that they're learning about something, okay? They're learning about something. On the screen are examples of how you might phrase statements that offer participants the opportunity to articulate what they're learning about. So this is how you might write the question on the evaluation. List four out of the six strategies that you practice. And that you know, it would be topic specific, of course. Do you all get that? I'm not putting any topics up here, but I'm just giving you an idea of how to get that kind of feedback on what they learned about, okay? Okay. Identify the sense set of principles, and then of course you, you would identify what the topic was, what are the principles they learned about, but identify a set of principles. That's another way of getting at, do they remember them? Can they, can they put them back down on paper since they've been talking about them for the last two or three hours? Describe two strategies that support a particular concept you've been talking about, all right? And maybe complete a post-training um, inventory that would match something that you gave them prior to that. And again, the various methods that you could use for this would be lists, having them do lists, having them write descriptions, having them make comparisons, having them do a little narrative, and possibly an inventory. These open-ended methods allow for much more information to come from the participant instead of you giving them everything. Questions about this. Are you clear on the difference between level one and level two. Yes. 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 And and when when do you do level one and level two evaluation? The end of the le at the end of it. At the training. end of what? Not at the very end because then they do. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> it is in the closing component though, right? right. That's right. It's done in the closing component. That's exactly right, but not at the very, very end. But the idea is this is something that's done at training before the group leaves, correct? Yes. All right. Now we're going to move on to level three. All right. Level three evaluation is behavior change of the participants or the staff that's at the training. This level is inquiring about what participants are doing differently back in their workplace after the training session than what they were doing before they came to the training. At level three, you are measuring the adult's use of the knowledge and skills in their workplace setting after the training. And this is going to be done a set number of weeks after the training. This requires some kind of follow-up depending on the topic. Four weeks post-training might be appropriate for one topic, where eight weeks post-training might be appropriate for another topic. The trainer will determine what is an appropriate amount of time needed to practice before you can go in and collect information on behavior change. So do, does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, or yeah. What comments or questions you have about this? This is not something you go in and do right after training is done. They need time to practice. Articulate what you understand that it might be so many weeks for one topic and another number of weeks for a different topic. It's not a window. It's a set number of weeks you're going to identify. But why? How do you understand that um, for one topic it might be four weeks and another topic it might be six weeks after that? What's going to help you determine that? 
Uh, I think your topic. Uh huh. Can you give me an example of a topic that might be pretty easy to go in soon after, and a topic that might you might need to give them a little more time? Anybody? Early childhood topics. What might be a topic that a change could be made fairly quickly, and another topic where it's going to take quite a bit more time? Room arrangement would be something that you could change quickly. Absolutely. That would go very quickly. I could see going in three weeks later. Could you? Maybe even yes. two. You kind of have to know your audience a little bit. If you don't, I'd say three weeks. But yes, very soon after. What what's a topic that um you wouldn't be able to do in three weeks? Behavior management. What? Behavior management. Yeah, a workshop on behavior management. I would say would easily you might want to wait a good six weeks, maybe eight weeks, so that they have plenty of time to really internalize those strategies and practice them and use them and possibly see some differences in what they're doing. And in themselves, that they are actually doing some different, some different strategies and and really applying them. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Some of the ways that you can get this material, that some of this information on behavior change is, for instance, for a learning environment, you might get a list of material that can. So that's a documented list of material. You might get um, a set of photos. You might get a brief, um, say, a three-minute video, a timed observation, a narrative where you're writing down what you observe and, and writing narrative. So there, there, are, there are different ways in which you can document this information that doesn't take a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort, but it does take some time and some effort. You must identify the exact number of weeks so that they know how much time they have from the time training ends until you're going to be seeking this, this concrete measurable information. And it's what we call baseline information. Way back before the training, you have had them do something that's going to be the exact same thing you're going to look at three weeks out. Let's take the learning environment. Before they come to that training, on a, a pre-assignment would be to bring with them a copy of a diagram of their current learning environment. Do you see that as a viable pre-assignment? Yes. Everybody? Yes. yes. That's a viable, yes. viable pre-assignment for a learning environment. And then you give them three weeks to go back and apply the principles of setting up a learning environment and then at Three weeks out, you'll email them and say, please draw and mail or draw and scan and email your current learning environment. What do you have now? You have data. You have your baseline because they drew before they got the training. And now you have data and you can make the comparisons and see the, the changes the change in their behavior in terms of their learning environment. Now, do you see that as a very hard, heavy, time-consuming activity? No, not at all. No. Not at all. And that's what we're asking you to think about as trainers. Always before the training starts, what can you look at in terms of the adult's behavior that you can get pre-training and then look at it again so many weeks after training so you have data, and what you end up with is hard data on what's improved, and you can share that data, which gives the directors or whoever has hired you information on the return on their investment for hiring you to do the training. Do you see that as a positive step in the training process? Yes. Yes. I, all right. Yes. Now, does level three happen during the training or after the training? After. Okay, it is after. And what is the key that distinguishes level three 
from level one and two? There's this, one and two is during the training, right? What what else distinguishes the difference of three from level one and two evaluation? One and two is on paper. Level three is the actual doing. Well, there's some truth to that. That's exactly right. A couple of the things is level three is a pre and post always, and it encompasses practice and implementation effort always. Okay, mm -hmm. level one and two do not require pre or post, and they do not require practice and implementation. Got right. it? Yes. Anybody else? Any other comments? All right, level four. Level four is results and impact. This could be for children, families, or the program. Most often we're looking at the children, but it could also include families or program. This is the, this is the second part of the return on investment that you can can make for the directors or whoever has hired you. For example, the training has made a difference in the outcome for children. That's what we want, that's what we're hoping for, right? That something is going to happen differently for the children. Yes? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So what you have to ask yourself is, has the implementation of the new skill impacted the children in any way? And how do we know? What, how do we find out? So what you want to ask is, Look at the, what's on the screen. It says, there, is there a percent of decrease in children missing less days due to illness? Is there an increase of children engaged in cooperative play? Is there a percent of increase in children solving their own problems more independently? Is there an increase in their mean length of utterance? Those are all the things, or various things, these are different examples, of what you might look, be looking for in terms of results and impact. The, the adult in the classroom has changed their behavior and it's do, they're doing it enough and consistently enough that now we should see some change in the children. And that is going to happen some months after the teacher's change in behavior, not weeks now, generally, okay? Again, the number of months that you would go in to look for results and impact has to do with the topic. Can somebody give an example like they did for the uh, behavior change? What, what kind of change, uh, results and impact might you see faster and what topic might be something where results and impact might take a, a quite a bit longer? Any ideas? If increasing I change, go ahead. Longer. I said sorry. increasing parent involvement would be a topic that might take longer. Which one? I'm sorry. Say it again. Increasing parent involvement. Uh, let's let's think of a child one because um, increasing parent involvement. We haven't talked about that in terms of of the level three either, and that has to do with parents, not the children. So let's think of a child. Take the learning environment. If the teacher goes in and within uh, two or three weeks has actually changed that room around. Now there would be some other things would, we might be looking for. One, let's just say, would be better flow of traffic. Okay? Do you think we would we would see some results and impact of traffic flow fairly quickly? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that after we look at that three weeks later, maybe eight weeks or two months later, we can go in and measure that traffic flow, right? But if it is behavior issues like you brought up before, if it's going to take the teacher maybe eight weeks or ten weeks to really make a real change, then don't you suppose we might have to go in about three months or four months later and see what impact that is having on children? And again, we don't have a window here. You're going to set the number of months or weeks, but typically it would be like two months, two and a half months, that sort of thing. Is that clear with everybody? Yes. Yeah. 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 So 
So, barring any questions that you might have, what we're going to engage in for the next little while is you're actually going to do some polling. We have collected questions from you all throughout the modules that you've been working in. And from those, we've extracted le leveled questions from not just you, but lots of folks. And what we want you to be able to do is look at that question, and you're going to be pulled whether you think that is a level one, a level two, a level three, or a level four question based on what you're reading. Now, for the folks that can't see the screen, I will read the question at least once, maybe twice, and then you can still pull. Is everybody clear on what we're going to do? Yes. 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 All right. So I will take the time to read the question out loud so the people who cannot see the poll can see them. And here we go. And get your quest, um, answer it as quickly as you can so we can move forward. Here's the first one. On a scale of one to five, rate the content knowledge displayed by the training. Is that a level one, level two, level three, or level four question? Level one. Level one. Uh -uh, just poll. Quietly just pull, do your pull. And if you don't if you can't do the poll, write in your answer on the write in. Okay, uh, we have fifteen, I'm thinking maybe of oh, sixteen. All right. So fifteen people, the majority of you said it is a level one and you are correct. That is somebody's opinion about how much knowledge they think the trainer has displayed, correct? That is a participant reaction. All right? Next question. Was an appropriate amount of content covered during this training? Level one, level two, level three, or level four? Was an appropriate amount of content covered during this training? Eight people pulled so far. Ten. 14. All right, we've got kind of a split here. Many say level one, but some say level two. What is it asking for? Is it asking for fact or opinion? Opinion. 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 So if it's asking for an opinion, what level is that? One. That should be level fun. one. You're right. Next question. Crap. So that, all right. Tape and tally, yes, no, single answer, and open-ended questions used by the adult while reading a book to children. Tape and tally, yes, no, single answer, and open-ended questions used by adults while reading a book to children. Okay, it's pretty well split. Nine, eleven. Hurry, hurry up and vote. Okay. So, is this something that you would be doing at the end of training on a paper evaluation? No. Why not? You're right. No, you wouldn't. Why not? We're not going to be taping and telling people at the end of a training, are we? No. This is something, this is an action, right? This is an action. If it's an action, it means that we're expecting some kind of change in behavior. Makes it a level three, okay? This is an action, level three. Next question. What did you like best about your training experience today? Quickly vote. Is this a fact or is this opinion? Opinion. opinion. This is opinion, opinion and that makes it a level one. Whoever said it was a level four, you need to really think about this. This is just asking what they liked. Okay, next. What is the percent of increase in the use of open-ended questions when talking with children during small group time? <coughs> A 
11, a couple more, get your vote in. All right, we're asking about an action. Is the action of the child or is the action of the adult? In this one. Who's the action by, people? The adult. The adult. And if the action is by the adult, we're looking for behavior what? Change. And behavior change is level what? Three. 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 So this is a level three, the percent of increase in the use of open-ended questions when talking with children during small group time. This is post-training, level three. What is the change in behavior? Next question. What were two key learning points for you today? Nine, ten. Let's get your vote in. Okay, we've got the mo the majority of people looking at level two. The key word is right in the question itself. What were two key learning points? This is a um, participant learning question, which makes that what level? Two. Two. Absolutely a level two. Next question. Please rate the overall value of today's training on a scale of one to five. Please rate the overall value of today's training on a scale of one to five. Hi, you're catching on. All right, this is fact or opinion? Opinion. Opinion, and that makes it level one. All right, next question. List the three steps an adult should use to introduce a child-initiated small group time. List the three steps an adult should use to introduce a child-initiated small group time. Get your vote in. Most of you are correct. What are we asking for in this question? What they learned. Yeah, we're asking what they learned about. This is something that would be asked on an, on an evaluation form, asking them to list three of the steps adults should use in that. So that makes it a level two. Next question. Increase score results on the Itters, Eckers, or class assessment. And the hint is in this statement as well. Get your vote in. Ha! Very good, you 11 people that have voted so far. We're looking at results. If you do some section of the Itters, Eckers, or class, that means that there's been some impact if the score has changed, correct? Yeah. All right. Next question. Would you recommend this training workshop to your colleague? Vote. Ah, very good. Hi, ah, you're catching on. You really have a handle on this one. Fact or opinion? Opinion. Opinion, opinion. and that makes it level one. Reaction. Yep. Next question. Are you motivated to attend a follow-up session on this topic? Oh, people. Thank you. All right. Fact or opinion? Opinion. 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 It's, opinion. it's their reaction. Opinion. If they would be motivated again, that's their reaction, so it's a level one. Okay. Nice job. Next question. List the current types and amounts of materials that are accessible to children in your block area. Okay, this is not asking what they learned about in terms of materials and types. This is what they have. So this is an action again. What does that make this? Three. Level three. You are now doing a pre-post. You know, you probably had them list those things before they came to training. And now some weeks after this workshop, on materials and accessibility to materials, you are asking them what changes they've made. So it is level three, change in behavior. 
They're doing something better in their block area, hopefully. Is that clear? Because we had quite a skew here. Is that clear? Yeah. Are there questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I would think that you would want to specify whether this list is made at the beginning of the um, well, you're right, you're right to a certain extent, but again, remember, yeah. this would be a pre-assignment or a pre-training, something you'd have them do. So if I'm, if I'm putting it on this list, you've got to know this is post-training, just by virtue of what we're doing here, okay? I thought the same thing she did, that, um, that it, so... I, I and even if it was pre-training, what we're after is behavior change, not level two, what they gained from the workshop. Okay? Okay. Just trying to make sure you get that because a lot of people thought it was level two when we're actually looking at behavior change. What current types gave it away? You know, they've given us some information in the past, which is the pre-assignment or the pre-training exercise, and now we're asking some weeks, Later, what current stuff do you have now, okay? So that would be the post-training after a training on materials and accessibility in the block area. Clear? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. next question. Was there enough time allowed for questions to be asked and answered? Was there enough time allowed for questions to be asked and answer. All right, you got it. Fact or opinion? Opinion. 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 And that is a level one done on that paper evaluation right at the close to the end of training. Absolutely. Next question. What are four to six different book genres represented in children's books? What are four to six different book genres? that would be represented in children's books. A couple more people voting. Get your vote in. Get your vote in. All right. Predominance in level two, you are absolutely right. We're asking for information. We're asking for what they learned about. Can they identify four to six different book genres that children's books across the span represent? All right. Next question. Thank you. List the verbal support strategies that encourage adult-child interaction. List the verbal support strategies that encourage adult-child interaction. What are we asking for? Ah, we've got a, a predominance of level two. It is level two, and why is it level two? What are we after? What they learned. Yep, we asked what they learned about today. We asked, we, they learned about some verbal support strategies, and we want to know, can you list a few, okay? Next question. What, was this training an effective use of your time? Fact or fiction? Fact or opinion, I mean. <laughs> opinion. Opinion. opinion, easily, level one. Next question. What are three changes you could make based on the principles for arranging the learning environment? What are three changes you could make based on the principles for arranging the learning environment? So let me take this one and say we aren't asking for their opinion, and we aren't assuming that they've made these changes yet. We want to know if they understand some things that you might have to do to adhere to the principles of the setting up a, le a learning environment. And that is asking them about what they learned about. All right? Clear? Next. We must be getting close to the end. Let's see. Write three open-ended questions you might ask a child why they are engaged in play. Thanks, Patty. Write three open-ended questions you might ask a child while they are engaged in play. Okay, the people who are calling this level four, there's nothing here we're uh, measuring from what our children are reacting to those open-ended questions. So it is not a level four. 
And it is not a level three because we're not asking what teachers are doing. It is level two because we, were, we are asking them if they can identify what open-ended questions are. Very good. All right, next question. Describe the difference between verbal and nonverbal adult-child interaction strategies. As we've gone through these, you are getting clearer and clearer, especially on the differences between level one, level two, and maybe even level three. Yep, here we're asking them, again, to, to write down on that evaluation form near the end of training if they can give us a few examples of these things, of these strategies. So thank you. Next. Was the pace of the training appropriate? The last question and unanimously so far, there we have it. Yes, we are asking their opinion about the pace of the training, and that is a level one question. Thank you, Patty. And thank you, group, for doing that. You've completed the poll, and now it's time to interpret the results of the poll that you just completed. The results are compiled on a graph, and that graph is going to give us some information. For those of you that are not, that cannot see your screen, this might be a little difficult and you might have to go in later and listen to the recording and watch, the, um, watch this on your computer afterwards. But let's take a look at that graph. Now, just visually, as you look at this, just kind of eyeball it. Those are all the questions we just practiced. This graph is a visual representation of everything we just looked at. And by just looking at this visual, what do the columns tell us? What are the implications to us as trainers? What are the strengths and weaknesses of what we have attempted to train? Not what we've attempted to train. No. Think about what we're doing right now in this webinar. It does tell us about our strengths and weaknesses, in terms of how we understand what? The response to the questions. Mm. There's a, a little more to it than that. This graph shows us that we have a pretty good understanding of level one and level two type evaluation inquiry. Would you agree? Yes. Because there are a lot of questions under level one and there are a lot of questions under level two. Get less and less as you go on. All right? So then I would ask, why does this happen? Why are we sort of cumulatively as a group stronger in our understanding of level one and level two evaluation than we are in level three and level four evaluation. Those are the basic, those are the earlier learned um, levels of evaluation. Yes. Or there perhaps may have been more examples of those that you had asked us to respond to? Well, there were more because in terms of submission, those are the ones that we got. That's why I'm asking you, uh, we got a lot of submissions for level one and level two, which means that's what we're most familiar with and that's what we're using and that's what's being used with us when we're participants. You get that? That's why there's so many level one and level two type inquiries, because it's, it's what we know how to do, okay? So you have a, a, go ahead. Yes, I just lost the uh, browser, um, have to check back in. Um, there was no graph that displayed and uh, the webinar just went off on my end, so. Okay, what I would suggest is um, tomorrow, 
go back into the course and, and then take a look at the recording. Everything will be there for you, okay? Sure. Okay. So the bottom line here, folks, is that you have um, a background experience in dealing with level and two, one and two questions, either because as participants, that's what you've been asked at the end of training when you get your paper eval, right? Right. Or as a trainer, it's what you're asking. You know because it's, it's what everybody does. So you're pretty clear on that, and we don't have to spend much more time on that. You already ask reaction questions and what people learn about questions. Where we really want to spend our time is how can I get better at level four and uh, level three and level four. For those of you that are brand new to training, to be honest with you, this is going to be easier for you because you aren't caught in habit. And for those of you who are seasoned trainers, this is going to be harder for you because you're very caught in habit. You're not used to doing this. So let's just move on and see where to go with this information. When you look at this level one, two, three, and four, I'm going to ask, which are the most critical levels of evaluation and why? I would say three and four because we want to see the results from our training. That is absolutely correct. They, are, they measure accountability, and, it's, and that's the bucket right there. They measure accountability. According to our initial definition of effective training, there must be a behavior change on the part of the participant. Acquiring new knowledge and skills will not fulfill the workplace outcome if the knowledge and skills are not implemented. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. yes. Funders are interested in results and impact. The return on their investment, level three and four evaluation, provides that critical information. Also, when a trainer can show the director and staff a percentage of improvement, which is the change in behavior, even if it's like only 8% or 6%, that beats having no facts and it proves that your training is beginning to make a difference and it motivates and inspires staff to keep their practice and implementation efforts going. Then you follow up by proving results and impact and directors are far more apt to ask you back to do more training they're far more apt to work with you in terms of following your directions, and they're far more apt to trust your decision. So if you can go in and say, oh my goodness, there's been an 8% increase in what teachers were doing from the time I was here till eight weeks later, do you see how motivating and how encouraging that is, both to staff and director? Yes. Now remember, Tone has a lot to do with that. If you were to say, well, there was an 8% increase, but we'd sure like to see a lot more, where will that get you? Will that excite anybody? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But if you say, oh my goodness, 8%. Now, to you out there, 8% might not sound like a lot. But if it was 1% or 8%, 8% is a lot. And if it's nothing, you have nothing to say, or you can say there's been improvement of 8% or 6%, that's pretty exciting, folks. Do you agree? Yes. yes. You've got to get that in your head. That is amazing because if you keep working with this group and they increase 8% now, they may increase 16% the next time, and 18%, and then 24%, and so on, and so on. And you see how you start seeing growth, and how everybody gets excited and motivated? Yes. Yeah. So, based on what we've just summarized, in terms of the information gained from each level of evaluation, what are the implications for trainers when planning for evaluation? All four levels of evaluation are very what? Important. Important. Very important. Yep. All four levels of evaluation must be what? Practice provided. Practice is good. Any other words you might want to throw in there? Planned. Planned is good. 
So I don't care what the P word is as long as it has something to do with what you just said, plan, practice, or present, okay? All four levels of evaluation must be planned, practiced, and present. That said, and all that we've gone through, the good news is we are experienced in level one and two and don't have to pay attention to that so much anymore, but we really have to pay attention to levels three and four. So before we sign off, not that you won't get some more on this, but what questions do you have or what comments would you like to make about this evaluation webinar and specifically level three and four, but on any of the levels before we sign off? Anybody. We have a good four minutes, so any questions or comments or confusions or, hmm, scratch my craw kind of thing. <coughs> <clears throat> A lot of good information was provided. Thank you. That was level one, participant reaction. <laughs> That's just your opinion that I like it. <laughs> I like to hear that. You know you're going to have to write some level uh, three and four evaluation questions. So you really want to be able to understand the difference between what's done at training, which is level one and two, and that expectation of doing follow-up afterwards. And remember, both level three and level four, now get this, are things that you have to get a baseline on before the training, that's in your pre-assignment, or pre-training exercise or whatever, okay? Both level three and four demand that for a baseline. Okay, you keep it simple and keep it, you know, doable for the teachers, but they can. This is not brain surgery. So that when you come back some weeks later for level three and some months later for level four, what you're measuring can be, what you're, you know, measuring can be measured against your baseline. Okay? That is really important for you to understand. If you have nothing done before the training and you go in and try and do level three and level four, you'll have no data to measure against. And if you've got questions about that and you can't quite articulate it here, email me, call me, please, so that you can get this straight in your mind so that when you, when you come to do it, we're not asking you to do eight level three things and seven level four, one or two level three, and one or two level four pre-training so that when you follow up with them those weeks and months later, you actually have something to measure against. Yes, you can call me for support. Please do. Call, email, let me know. Okay? Any questions or comments right now that anybody can think of? To a certain extent, the objectives in the training uh, would be connected to this, um, yes. And we can talk on that on an individual basis as to how that would, you know, pan out. Um, definitely connected to the workplace outcomes, somewhat connected to the training outcomes, yes. Well, if there are no more questions or comments, I'm going to move on with the rest of our webinar and um, bring closure to this, okay? Okay. I would like to be the type of trainer that sees change in behavior. And you will if you prepare before the training your level three and level four inquiries so that you can get information pre-training and then post-training, okay? On that, I would just want to say that um, following the completion of this evaluation webinar, you will have an online assignment and um, you are going to get an opportunity to practice writing level three and level four questions or inquiries, okay? 
And I use those two because sometimes an inquiry isn't a direct question. It's asking for something. All right, just so you understand why I, I use that word inquiry along with question. But there'll be something for you to do, okay? And I want to really sincerely thank you for your time, attention, and participation on this webinar. And remember, tomorrow a recording of this webinar will be available. So if you want to go back and listen to it and look at some of those examples and um, just hear the information again and some of the reasoning, you can do that as, a, as just another resource for you. Okay? Okay. Thank sure. you very much, everybody.